Good morning. On this Wednesday morning, we look at John chapter 8, verses 28 through 59. And it, you know, we, we pick up kind of in a, a conversation with between Jesus and some others. And Jesus said, when you have lifted up the Son of Man, then you will realize that I am He. I mean, they've been asking Him who He is. They've been refusing to hear his testimony because you, you can't testify to yourself. And, you know, he's, he's saying pretty much straight out that I am the Son of God. God is my Father. And, and he will continue to do that to hear. You know, he'll say, well, you call your father Abraham. And they'll say, no, we have no father but God. And Jesus will say, well, if you believed in God, or if you believe in God, you should believe in me. You know, but, but they don't. And, and so here, this, this sentence, you know, when, when you have lifted up the Son of Man, you will realize I am He. You know, he's talking about his crucifixion, his being lifted up on the cross. And, you know, when we think about, you know, on the, when he's on the cross, I mean, Luke's gospel, the one thief says, you know, this man is innocent. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. The centurion says, truly, this was the Son of God, you know. And so when he's lifted up on the cross, there, there is witness, you know, stated right there that he is who he's claiming to be. And then definitely on the third day when he is, you know, on Sunday morning when they come and he's no longer in the tomb, I mean, there, I mean, there shouldn't really be any more question except that the religious leaders were so blinded and so, actually, I would say, led by the devil that they couldn't believe it, couldn't accept it. And Jesus continued to be, you know, not believed in. And as he continues in the sentence I just started with, he said, I speak these things as the Father instructed me. This isn't my own. This isn't something that I came up with. My Father and, and, and that word Father is capitalized. So, I mean, it's when, if, if the word Father is capitalized or Lord is capitalized, it's referring to God. And, it, and when Jesus talks about the Father, that's who he's talking about, God. He said, the one who sent me is with me. He has not left me alone, for I do what is pleasing to him. And then John puts in this, as he was speaking, many believed in him. Many listened and believed him. And then Jesus says to them, if you continue in my word and you are my disciples, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. And when Jesus is before Pilate, you know, Pilate asks that question, what is truth? And, and we hear that in other famous plays and different things as well. That question, what is truth? And, and it is, I mean, how many times have you tried to get to the truth of the matter. I mean, we see so much stuff in the, in the internet and in the world and in the papers and on the radio and the TVs and stuff. And I mean, how much of what we are told and shown is really true? How do we get to the truth? You know, you can read an article about something that, you know, say Congress is doing or, you know, right now all of the hoopla with the electric cars and carbon emissions and all that. And, and, I mean, you, you logically think, okay, yeah, the car itself probably isn't emitting CO2. But how much, you know, I mean, how do we get to the truth? And how do we get to the bottom, the end of the story, to the, to the bottom line? And, and in our faith and in our trust in God, we look to the Bible, we look to Jesus' words, we look to the words of the prophet and to God. And, um, you know, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. We are set free by, the, by the believing the truth that Jesus is the Lord and Messiah, we are set free from that collective power of sin, the collective power of the devil. That's what we are set free from when we believe the truth of Jesus as Lord and Messiah. And this is in when they say we're descendants of Abraham and have never been slaves to anyone. Huh. They forget a lot of things, you know. And, you know, sometimes when we've gone through a rough time in life and it's just you know like you know talking to some people that you know lived through the the dirty 30s the, the you know the late 20s the the stock market crash you know and there's very few of them around anymore to talk to them but 
You know, they will reminisce about some of that, but yet they'll talk about the good old days. Because our minds are made to hopefully remember more of the good, focus on the good, in order that we can lead a happy and productive life. If we, when we focus on the negatives and all of the troubles and, and you know, the, the chronic complainer in us kind of tries to take over, I mean, you know, we find we're not as happy. And, and so here they're saying we are descendants of Abraham and have never been slaves to anyone. Well, they may not really strictly be slaves to the Roman government right now, but they are under Roman government rule. They are not free people. And, and they, you know, they just kind of forget a lot of those things. And verse 36, uh, one to think about and to know and to, to, to put to your memory, if the Son makes you free, you will be free indeed. And this is, if the truth sets you free, you will be free. If you believe in the Son and the Son sets you free, you're free. We don't have to worry about our sins, you know. Does Jesus really forgive me? Yes. That's the answer to no. And, and, and he goes right on into this conversation and he says, I know you're descendants of Abraham, but you look for an opportunity to kill me. Why? Because there is no place in you for my word. There is no place in you for my word. And think about that. Is there a place in you for God's word, for Jesus Christ? Well, if you're listening to me this morning, I'm pretty sure there is. Or if you listen, whenever you might listen to this, I'm pretty sure that there's room in you for the word of God. But Jesus is speaking to these people and he's saying, if you don't believe in me, there is no room in you for the forgiving, loving, gracious word of God. And, you know, and again, he says, I declare what I've seen in the Father's presence. And, and he goes on and he talks more about Abraham. And then in verse 30, 46, he, should, he says, which of you convicts me of sin? If I tell the truth, why don't you believe me? Whoever is from God hears these words of God. And the reason you don't hear them is because you are not from God. And, and I think about that, you know, well, why wouldn't somebody be from God? I mean, these Jews are, are worshiping God, they're following God, but yet they can't hear the forgiving word of Jesus Christ. And, and then they come back at him with an accusation. Uh, are we right in saying you're a Samaritan? I mean, that would be a terrible insult to a Jew to be called a Samaritan. And not only that, but you have a demon. Well, and Jesus straight out says, I do not have a demon, but I honor the Father. And you dishonor me. I don't seek my own glory. But, you know, he goes on and, and then the people ask him, are you greater than our father Abraham who died? You know, um, yeah. And, and in a part, a part of the answer to this question in verse 58, Jesus says to them, very truly, I tell you, before Abraham was, I am. And that, you know, uh, you know that I am statement is so powerful. It's, it's the word that God used twice when Moses said, who should I say you sent me? And God says, I am who I am. In other words, maybe I will do what I will do. I will be who I will be. I, you know, I am. Not, I might be, I was, I, I will be, but I am, I exist. And he says that, those same two words today to identify himself, I am, you know, I am. God is forever. In the beginning, um, I remember growing up, we'd sing, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, or without end, amen, amen. I mean, God is eternal. He has been from the very beginning, before creation ever started. God was and is. He continues. And Jesus says that right here. Before Abraham was, I am. And it's just like the other, you know, in, I talked about, I'm going to get, you know, the other on Sunday morning with, uh, with Jesus' prayer in John 17. You know, uh, return me to the glory that I had with you before the world was. You know, I am. Jesus says, I am time immortal. I am here always. I am, you know, I am. 
And for us to believe, that is, is the most important thing, I think, for us as Christians. I mean, if we didn't believe in Jesus as I am, we wouldn't be a Christian. So may God richly bless you today. And may you share those blessings with those that you encounter.